Hi, this is Michael Altos, and we are continuing with our discussion of psychiatric and CNS drugs, and this is part two. We've talked about a number of different antidepressant drugs, and before we leave the area of mood disorders, we will speak about lithium. Lithium is the treatment of choice for bipolar disorder. Bipolar is manic depressive disorder, which means patients who have pathologically high highs and low lows. So they have depressive episodes, but they also have manic episodes where they're driven to do, um, to not sleep very much, to do impulsive things, and lithium is a good treatment for this disorder. Because of the way lithium is dosed, patients need to be titrated on this drug and their lithium levels need to be measured. So you draw plasma lithium concentration to measure lithium levels. Lithium is filtered by the kidney at the proximal tubule and then it's, uh, sorry, it's filtered by the kidney and then reabsorbed in the proximal tubule just like sodium. And we expect them to behave similarly because they're both single charge cations. Now when patients become sodium depleted, then in the process of trying to save sodium, the body will also save lithium. And as a result, patients may have increased lithium levels. They may have side effects like polydipsia, which means thirst, or polyuria. They may also develop some hypothyroidism. Lithium can cause patients to have a prolonged response to both depolarizing and non-depolarizing drugs. And again, we expect this because lithium is like sodium and it would bind to the sodium channel. We also may see some increased risk of side effects with patients who are taking neuroleptic drugs. The important thing that you need to know about lithium is that because it mimics sodium, these patients should probably not be given diuretics like loop or thiazide diuretics or NSAIDs. Why? Well, the diuretics, uh, as we know, can alter their lithium levels. And NSAIDs, which decrease blood flow to the kidney, can also alter lithium levels. And when patients develop toxic levels of lithium in their body, they can be lethargic or weak, they can have a tremor, and start to have cardiac arrhythmias, eventually leading to hypotension, confusion, and even seizures. And as we've already said, when patients are dehydrated, sodium restricted, or given diuretics or NSAIDs, this can be exacerbated. If it gets bad enough, these patients may need to be diuresed with an osmotic diuretic, which will unload lithium, or even dialysis in severe cases. We will pause for a moment in case you have any questions you want to note about lithium. Now we're going to move on to antipsychotic drugs. These are drugs that are used to treat schizophrenia, which means psychosis. These are patients who do not have a normal grip on reality and they may be confused, they may be paranoid, or they may have hallucinations. Um, and also sometimes bipolar disorder is treated with antipsychotic drugs as well, especially when these people develop psychotic features. Some examples of these drugs include chlorpromazine, which is Thorazine, Clozapine, which is Clozaril, Risperdone, which is Risperdal, Haloperidol, which is Haldol, and Droperidol, which used to be a common antiemetic drug. These drugs all work by blocking dopamine receptors, and they're metabolized in the liver. The side effects of these drugs are important to know. The most common group of side effects are called extrapyramidal side effects. These are all sorts of different movement disorders, which pretty much all of the neuroleptic drugs can cause. And there are several different kinds of extrapyramidal disorders. So patients can develop what's called tardive dyskinesia, which is the abnormal and totally involuntary movements of their face or tongue or neck. And these series of pictures here show a patient having part of dyskinesia, making all of these funny faces um, totally out of her control. Patients can also develop an acute dystonic reaction, which is an acute episode of rigidity of the muscles in the face or neck or tongue or even the larynx, which could lead to strider and airway compromise. The treatment for this would be diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl, or cogentin, and actually, the uh, mechanism here is that they're anticholinergic. That seems to be what does it. Even though we will learn later that Benadryl is an antihistamine, it also has anticholinergic properties. And these drugs are used to treat 
an acute dystonic reaction. And often in um, psychiatric patients who need to be uh, given emergency neuroleptic drugs to get them under control, often they're given a cocktail that includes haloperidol as well as diphenhydramine um, prophylactically. Other examples of extrapyramidal side effects of movement disorders would be Parkinsonism, where patients become rigid and have a tremor. And we'll talk more about Parkinson's disease soon, but you'll see that Parkinson's disease comes from not having enough dopamine. So it makes sense that a drug that blocks dopamine receptors could precipitate a Parkinsonism-like disorder. And finally, patients can develop akathisia, which is a sort of restlessness, again, a need to move. Here's another picture which shows um, an acute dystonic reaction. You can see the neck twisted to the side and the arms. And here's a patient's hand twisted in an acute dystonic reaction. And you can see that she's having very uncomfortable involuntary movements of her face. Uh, and it could happen also in her tongue or even in her airway. And these, are, these can be emergencies. Another side effect of the antipsychotic medications is neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which we've spoken about back when we talked about MH. Because it looks like malignant hyperthermia. We see the hyperthermia, we see muscle hypertonicity or rigidity, uh, mental status changes, and people can actually become so rigid they need to be intubated, they may be difficult to ventilate, they may have myonecrosis, breakdown of their muscles from the rigidity, which could lead to um, myoglobin in the blood, which can cause renal failure. The incidence of NMS is about 0.5 to 1%, and a significant number of these people can die from it. So it's very important to find and to treat. The cause is unknown, and the treatment can be dantrolene to relax the muscles, and also some dopamine agonists like bromocryptine or amantadine, which um, we will see again when we talk about Parkinson's disease. Just an interesting point for you to remember, if a patient has MH and you give them a drug like rocuronium, the rigidity will remain. They will not loosen up their muscles. And that's because MH occurs in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cells themselves. Um, but in neuroleptic malignant syndrome, if you give a non-depolarizing blocker, they will become flaccid. They will relax their muscles. So that's an important distinction just to be aware of. And as we've discussed before, there is no uh, relationship between malignant hyperthermia and neuroleptic malignant syndrome. One is not a contraindication for anesthesia. The antipsychotic drugs have effects in the heart. They cause alpha blockade, which can lead to orthostatic hypotension, and they prolong the QTC, the, your corrected QT interval, which can pr uh, predispose people to ventricular tachycardia or torsade. There are a number of different endocrine side effects, most notably the weight gain and the hyperglycemia. So we would watch for hyperglycemia when we manage these patients. In the central nervous system, uh, they do have sedative properties and may be a good choice for sedative in the perioperative period. There are also good anti-emetics. Uh, Haldol, droperidol have all been used successfully for postoperative nausea. Uh, but they can cause a dysphoric response, a very unpleasant feeling. Um, and that was seen especially with droperidol when it was used as part of anesthetics routinely. So we've talked about lithium and we've talked about neuroleptic medications and we'll stop here. If you have questions, please let me know. And we'll pick up with the third and final portion of this topic in the next video.